the volume nice and loud. Because we are controlling transmissions with dance beats and R&B. You're in the mix with Lil Drummer Girl. With your host, Dawn Marie. In the mix. In the mix. Hey, it's Dawn Marie here. Welcome to another episode of Little Drummer Girl. Tonight, I have a special guest, Dakota Dickerson, who's 19 years old, and he is a race car driver that currently races in the 2016 Cooper Tires USF 2000 series, powered by Mazda. He's formerly raced in this 2015 Skip Barber Summer Series, and his current sponsors are Mazda Motorsports, Team USA Scholarship, Skip Barber Racing School, Molecule Sports, Crow Enterprises, and R&M Autosport. I met him before the races at the Grand Prix in downtown St. Pete, and he and his dad were gracious enough to give me an interview. So without further ado, here they are. Interview with Dakota Dickerson, who's 19 years old, and he's here at Today, I think Pete at the Hoff of Raw House in St. Petersburg, and they are about to launch their race tomorrow and this weekend here in St. Petersburg. And he's been very gracious enough to give me a quick impromptu interview here. So, without further ado, here in Dakota. Yeah. Hi, thank you for having me on. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you because I know you're really busy and you have a lot of people here and a lot of things to do tonight. My question to you is this: oh, You're 19 years old. How did you figure out this is what you wanted to do, and how did it all begin? So, for me, it began kind of as a hobby um, I was actually started out as a birthday party at a local indoor karting place um, did that for a little bit and started off as a birthday party escalated into more competitive things I uh, started racing go-kart in the national level and then just this past year moved into cars and now we're here in st. Petersburg with the Verizon IndyCar series racing the USF 2000 car to uh, hopefully compete and win in the next couple days so how old or young were you when you actually began driving I was six years old, so it was my sixth birthday party. Uh, started off go-karting when I was six, did that up until I was 16, and then uh, had an accident that took me out of the cart for a little bit, and then hopped over into cars at age 17, 18, and now 19 years old. So what do you do for fun these days? I mean, because it's got to be such a high driving something that goes this fast. What do you do for fun? So, I mean, when I'm not in the race car or prepping or looking for partners or sponsors or anything like that, um, which takes up probably 90% of my life, other than school as well, um, business plan, and all that. Uh, when I do get the occasional free day off, I'm, I live, I'm in San Diego, so going to the beach, I'm about 15 minutes away from the beach, so whatever I can do to get there, maybe just hang out in the sand, go boogie boarding, do something, uh, just like relaxing. I love San Diego. I almost moved to Carlsbad in 1996, and La Jolla is my favorite town out there. So how long are you actually here in Florida? So I am in Florida. I came in Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon-ish, and then I'll, I'll fly out after the races Sunday night. Uh, we're just coming back from an official test in Birmingham. So really busy, but I'll be here up until Sunday. And tomorrow we're actually off track at 10.30. And I know there's a couple of cool beaches around here. Some indoor karting. Might take the team there and try and show them up. But yeah, <laughs> it'll be good. Have some relaxation. Oh, it's amazing. Yeah, we do have a lot of great things here in Florida. And the weather has been perfect. So you're in for a treat. And we have a lot of motorcycles here in <laughs> St. Pete. But yes, you're in for a treat and the weather's been amazing. So, Aunt Dakota, I, I hope you win the race and I wish you a lot of luck and thank you so much for taking time out tonight. And how can, if somebody wants to like learn more about you, how can they reach you? So we just launched our new website, www.dakotadickersonracing.com. So first name, last name, racing.com. Um, that has all of our contact info on it, our links to our social media. So if you guys go on there, look that up and start following me on social media and we'll have blogs, updates, whatever you guys want. Want, uh, we'll have it on there. That's awesome. Now here with Dakota's dad, Dakota Dickerson, and I have a couple questions for him. So how do you deal with it, a guy who's so young who wants to race cars for a living? I mean, that's got to be a very intricate, expensive hobby to get into besides getting into a business when you're first starting out. As a dad and a parent, that's got to be a lot to handle, no? It, it is. I mean, and it starts very early. So this is something Dakota knew he wanted to do since he was six. And it's a pretty common process, actually, and I'm sure he might have explained it, that it, it typically starts with karting, because that's an age where you can get into a racing vehicle, a go-kart, and compete, you know, at various levels and develop your racing skills and your talents and, you know, determine really whether or not it's something you possibly can do. And so he started when he was there. And so he's been doing it for 13 years, I guess. Now. And it kind of does start as a hobby, but for some of us, it transitions to a goal of being a profession. Do you travel a lot? 
We do. So at this level, so this is kind of a pinnacle transition for Dakota, going from an amateur status to basically a pro status. So when you, when you achieve the level of accomplishment, for example, being in this Mazda Road to Indy, I mean, we will travel to Florida, obviously where we're here today, Alabama, Wisconsin, we'll go to California, we'll end up in uh, New Orleans, all these different places that these national events happen because we race under the IndyCar band. So these support series, like the USF 2000, which Dakota is now a part of, part of these are the uh, sewing ground that the Indy teams look to for their future drivers. So we live with them. We race on a different schedule. We don't obviously race with them, but we race in combination with their series. So we're always traveling wherever the IndyCar. And this is essentially, again, the, the next generation of future drivers for IndyCar. Tell me, because he's so young and he's still in school, how does he handle both his professional life as well as his school life? Well, that's a really good question, and I think it's one that is very challenging, but when you have a passion to do something in your life, like be a professional race car driver, but you maintain an ambition of being uh, you know, someone who's going to study and have a, a degree or maybe get educated, they balance both. So these, these drivers are amazing. Dakota takes college classes in a conjunction between his race schedule. He takes online courses as well. So they actually fit this in. The, the, the issue, though, is the following. They, they obviously can't take a full course load like a normal student would here like at the local university. So they take one or two classes or they'll take their off-season time and kind of load up. So, you know, you have to kind of work with it inside of your racing career. But they all manage it. It's amazing. They all manage it very well. Really impressive that he doesn't give up because when you do have to take a step back and not take his full course load and you want to be done with it, you want to get it over with, the fact that he's still going through it, that's really very commendable. It, it is. And I think it's, you know, it's something that I think is important because, you know, being a race car driver is, is an ambitious goal and I think it's a very admirable one. But of course, you have to look at the long term. And so Dakota, for example, is interested in getting a degree in mechanical engineering in a automotive, racing automotive application. So that kind of, you can kind of parallel that, right? Because at some point, like all athletes, you have to have a plan B, right? Because you're not going to do this forever. I mean, it's like any sport, there's a prime silo or window, if you will, of, of optimum uh, But at 19, you know, he's kind of sitting in the perfect scenario. You know, or the- Absolutely. I mean, that was my dad's thing when I was a dancer um, trying to get on Broadway. He would always say, you know, have a plan B. <laughs> So, Always. you know, thankfully I took those business classes in high school because when I was hit by the drunk driver, I wind up losing, you know, a lot of use of my spine, so I couldn't dance anymore, and I had to come up with some other way to make a living, which was my dream, to be the dancer on Broadway. So it's, it really is great that he can go to school and do that. Um, and now, classes online, it's really amazing that you can really take everything and anything you can possibly imagine online and have it at your fingertips whenever you need it 24-7. Right, and that's exactly what he's doing. You know, he's taking a life load right now because we're in the heart of the season but towards October it'll lighten up so the off season in the winter or the fall in the winter you know and kind of heading into the spring there'll be a lot more focus on his education so he's always balancing the two you know but it takes real commitment and it takes real discipline because you can you can give up on one when you're kind of in the euphoria of the racing right so um, I think it's these very special drivers that somehow can um, commit to both and succeed and not only in the car but also in school it's that right lane ref- left brain thing going on right? exactly, exactly. it's, it's, it's really great. phenomenal it's really phenomenal well, thank you so much for taking the time out with me tonight to discuss this. It's awesome. I wish him a lot of luck, and I hope he uh, wins the race. Well, thank you very much. It's, it's, a, it's a daunting task since it's his first year. He's never seen the track. Uh, but today, you know, we had a qual- uh, not a qualifying, we had a practice session today, and there's 27 drivers, and he was uh, P6. You know, so that's not bad. So that's, that's encouraging. Right. So we'll see how the rest of the weekend goes. It's really tough. Awesome. I wish you the best of luck. Well, you heard it first right here. Thanks again for listening on Little Drummer Girl. Until the next time, I'll catch you on the good side. Namaste.